Former Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy tackled a range of public health crises. They included issues like Zika, drug and alcohol addiction, and obesity. But he also shed light on a silent crisis, the rising number of lonely people in America. He spoke about his concern at the Aspen Ideas Festival last year. Many people I have met have thousands of friends on Facebook, but find few people who really know them. As a society, we have built stronger Wi-Fi connections over time, but our personal connections have deteriorated. Now in a Harvard Business Review article, Morthy writes, loneliness is a growing health epidemic. He calls on companies to make fostering social connections a strategic priority. Dr. Vivek Morthy joins us back at the table. It's good to see you again. Thanks. Great to be here. Now, this is a topic that you say that you know personally about. You said that you were a shy, lonely kid that people didn't even know that about you. That's true. You know, in fact, it's something I've never even talked to my own family about. But when I was a child, I was very shy. I, it was hard for me to make friends, and I felt lonely a lot. Mm -hmm. But I felt ashamed to tell that Why to people. Why the shame? Yeah. Well, for many people and for myself uh, when I was a child, admitting that you're lonely uh, is essentially equivalent to admitting that you're not worthy of being loved. Mm -hmm. That's really what underlies this stigma around loneliness. So why is loneliness now an epidemic? Well, we are recognizing that loneliness is a lot more prevalent than we thought it was. But the data is also showing that there are more adults who admit to being lonely now than just two decades ago. And there are several re possible reasons for this. Number one, people are more mobile now than they ever have been. People move away from their communities and their home. There are record numbers of people who are actually living alone. But we also know that technology has had a potential role here. Technology can help or hurt. It's simply a tool. But for too many people, technology has led to substituting online connections for offline in-person connections. And ultimately, I think that has been harmful. Looking at your phone instead of talking to someone. Exactly. Or uh, spending time uh, on, on Facebook or on other social media thinking that that is equivalent uh, to sitting down and seeing a friend and talking to them face to face. Is so, it more common in men than women? Well, the data is interesting on that, but we have reason to believe that men may be more at risk in some ways uh, for loneliness. And some of this has to do with our culture around masculinity. Mm -hmm. you know, we think uh, in a, that masculinity is, is tied to being self-sufficient. Mm -hmm and not expressing your emotions and certainly not admitting to feelings of loneliness. But many men uh, do feel lonely, especially after they get married or have children where their social circles narrow. Women are much better at, at mm -hmm. keeping their connections in life than men are. Doctor, I think the interesting point you make too, though, is the connection between loneliness and our health right. and real health issues that occur as a result of it. This is one of the reasons that loneliness is getting more attention because we are learning more and more about the impact on health. Uh, it turns out that loneliness is associated with a reduction in your lifespan that is as severe uh, as the reduction in lifespan that you see with smoking, 15 cigarettes a day. It's greater than the impact on mortality of obesity. And part of this is because that loneliness actually places us in a stress state. We evolved to be social creatures. And thousands of years ago, if you were connected to other people, you were more likely to have a stable food supply uh, and to be protected from predators. So when you're disconnected, you're in a stress state. When that happens chronically, it can have a profound impact on your health. Do companies and business, I mean, is it worth building in more time for folks to get together? Like CBS News, there's a walking club right now, and it used mm -hmm. to be like coffee breaks, right, that people yeah. would take, or even happy hours, you know, where everyone gets together. Is it, do you think more of those times need to get built in? Well, I think the quality of time that people have together is what matters. Uh, get, giving people time to, to get together during happy hours, that can help to some extent. But sometimes people feel that they're just getting, taking time away from family or they're taking time away mm -hmm. from the work they have to do. And what do they end up doing? Often talking about work because yeah. that's what they have in common. Yeah. Instead, providing dedicated time in structured settings for people to truly get to know and understand each other. What are their values? What drives people? What are their experiences and inspirations? And what are their lives outside of work? People hunger to be known authentically. Mm -hmm. And far too many people feel invisible right now. And that is at the crux of our loneliness epidemic. I think it would be hard for anybody, especially an adult, male or female, to admit, I'm lonely. And, and what are you supposed to do with that if you're feeling that way? Well, it's a great question. So number one is to recognize that if you are feeling lonely, you are not the only one. There are yeah. many people out there who are feeling lonely. Number two, if you're feeling lonely, that it does not mean that there's something fundamentally wrong with you <laughs> and that you're not worthy of friendship or being loved. And finally, if you are not feeling lonely, it's important to recognize there are very likely are people around you who are. 
And that's why it's so important for us to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. The fundamental thing is this. We have for years thought about ourselves as an individualistic society that champions individual achievement. But what the data around loneliness tells us now more and more is that we are truly interdependent creatures yeah. and that ultimately we need each other. I okay. love this message. I, I do too. Great. I, I think too. it's really good. Dr. Morphy, thank you so much. Thank you.